Thank you all for joining this afternoon. Um, we're really excited about this topic today. Some of you on the line may be currently in Emerging Leaders programs and in your module two. Um, others of you on the line may be alumni and have very fond memories of module two, which is the financial module in our Streetwise MBA curriculum. Um, my name is Laura Lee Charles, and I'm the Senior Manager for Network Engagement at Interise. Um, and we schedule these webinars um, usually to align with most current emerging leaders participants to enhance what you're learning in the classroom. Um, but it's also a really great way for alumni to re-engage with some of the material and build upon some of that material as you make your way through your three-year growth plan. Um, so again, thank you so much for making the time to participate in this. Um, we have a couple other webinars coming up. Um, there's a cybersecurity webinar next week. There's uh, an Explode Your Sales webinar later in July. So keep your eyes peeled and eye connect for all that other good stuff to come. I'm very excited to introduce um, Raquel John Baptiste today. She is our instructor um, for the US Virgin Islands program, which has been running for three years, I believe. Um, and Raquel is one of those people that is passionate about numbers um, mm -hmm. and gets really excited when talking about, uh, well, just what she's going to be explaining today, kind of identifying those, those fixes, those improved efficiencies, um, and, and really making things work better for business owners, but also helping you understand what to look for in your own financial statements and your own processes so that you can um, be more aware and more informed about how your business is running. Um, Raquel holds certification and membership with the American Institute of Professional Bookkeepers. She's an associate member of the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers um, and has a great deal of experience um, working in bookkeeping and financial services, but also um, running her own business. So I am very happy to introduce her and turn the floor over, oh, over to Raquel after one bit of housekeeping. Please um, feel free to chat in questions. There's a Q&A uh, box at the bottom of your screen that you can use to submit questions. There's also a chat, um, so I'll be monitoring that as we go along. So please feel free to just put any, any conversation or questions in there as we go along, and I'll, I'll surface those to Raquel throughout the webinar. All right, over to you, Raquel. Thank you very much, Laura Lee. Welcome to all. Uh, my name is Raquel John Baptist. I am I'm a certified public accountant here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And yes, as Laura Lee says, I'm very passionate about my numbers. And I think that um, it's something that has always been a part of me and certainly helping business owners and others understand a little bit better and just know what to look for is something that I really enjoy doing. And so I was very excited when they um, wanted us to offer this webinar and hopefully you will um, be able to walk away and glean some good information that will be beneficial to you. And so it's entitled Analysis and Interpretation. Are your financial statements snitching on you? Now you're probably wondering, why did I ask, are your financial statements snitching on you? So you think about it, uh, a snitch is generally someone or is informed on information that could be uh, confidential or of an important nature. And so what are some of the things that you look for? The credibility. Is the information reliable? And in effect, that's what your financial statements represent about your business. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the key financial statements and what they represent. Now, I added a few WH to my vision of the financial statements. Your balance sheet, your income statement or your profit and loss, and your statement of cash flows. And as we go through, you'll see why I assigned the balance sheet to being the what, the income statement to the how, and the statement of cash flows as the why. These are not the only financial statements that can be presented, but these are the key ones to focus upon. So, when you look at your financial reporting, we've broken it down into five basic elements. Three represent your financial position, 
and to represent your financial performance. We're gonna look a little bit deeper um, at what exactly we mean by that. Now you'll notice that I have a little camera next to financial position. Why is that? Because when we think about a position, we're thinking about something that is static in one place at a specific time. And that's exactly what our balance sheet represents. It's the what. So the camera represents a still photo because when your balance sheet is presented, you are giving the position or the value as of a specific date. And we'll look at a sample balance sheet um, in a minute. So we talk about our balance sheet. What are we talking about? We're talking about our assets. Anything that the company owns, anything of value. We're talking about our liabilities. Anything owed. I put to get the valuables. You'll notice that I have a few icons there um, that represent your assets. Generally, in order to acquire assets for a business, it may require you perhaps taking a loan or result in some other indebtedness to acquire the assets to run your business. Then we talk about the equity, and that's the value of what's left. So we're gonna go over to, we'll go back to the income statement in a minute. Let's talk a little bit more about the balance sheet, the what. Now, as we said, it's as of a specific point in time. Your balance, she shows the resources of your business, the strength, your liabilities to creditors and owners. Why is this important? Strong balance sheets are gonna assist the business to survive where there may be an economic downturn or a strain and be able to be resilient when things rebound. When it comes to investors, creditors, lenders, they wanna know the health of your business. They want to know that there will be returns. They want to know the value currently as well as future values of the business. There are a few different components that are important when it comes to looking at what a strong balance sheet would represent. Some of these components include your working capital. Now, there are various ratio analysis that are used um, by whether it's investors, lenders, creditors, um, even internally by a business that help to demonstrate the health, liquidity, and viability of a business. I've listed a few. This is not all inclusive. This is just a few um, to give you an idea of certain things that are looked for. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But in talking about having a strong balance sheet, you want to be able to have the optimal level of working capital. When we talk about working capital, we're talking about our current assets as our current liabilities. We want to know that we have sufficient in order to be able to fund the business core operations, driving revenue and subsequently driving profit. Now, optimal can be different depending on the business and depending on the industry. And you have to be very careful because you don't want to have too much funds tied up, um, whether in stock and so forth, so that you're not able to meet your financial obligations. At the same time, you don't want to have too much cash sitting in the bank, which could be better utilized than whether um, acquiring assets to help the business work better, perhaps paying off debt um, or distributing. And so there's a fine balance in being able to have um, a strong working capital and a strong balance sheet. Something else that we want to consider positive cash flow. Now this is something that we'll talk a little bit more when we talk about statement of cash flows. But in order to achieve your, your goals and to meet the obligations, you must have a positive cash flow. And so whatever your financial resources are that are sitting on your balance sheet, it needs to be in a format um, that makes it a little bit easier for you to quickly turn it around in order to be able to satisfy any indebtedness or operations that are required. Let's look at a sample balance sheet. This is just a sample balance sheet. Um, 
to just give you an idea so that when you're looking at your financial statements, you will be able to have a better understanding of the components. So as we said before, a balance sheet is composed of your assets, your liabilities, and your owner's equity. You'll also notice that there is a current and long-term portion of both assets and liabilities. Generally, current assets are considered assets that are liquid. And when we say liquid, easily convertible within a year. Similarly, current liabilities would be those that would be paid short term up to one year. And it's important for us to look at that because when you consider being able to satisfy your debts, your expenses, you want to know what your liquidity is and what monies do you have to be able to pay your bills, uh, to pay your vendors, your employees, satisfy your debt. And so you'll notice more and more the component of a financial statement, a balance sheet, breaks out your um, assets and your liabilities into a current and non-current portion. And then whatever is left relates to your owner's equity. So if you take your total assets, less your total liabilities, and that gives you your total owner's equity. Your total owner's equity is the value that you have in the business. You'll notice that there has two components in the equity. We're just gonna focus um, on the retained earnings because this component is driven by another financial statement, which is our income statement. So we're gonna go back to and talk about the income statement now. So I called it the how. So we know what we have on our balance sheet, assets, our liabilities, the value, but how do we get it? How do we continue our operations? How do we build upon our cash? That is from our income. How do we generate that? It's gonna require certain operations and there are certain expenses related to it. This refers to our financial performance. You notice that I have like a video camera. Forgive me if that doesn't look like a video camera these days because things have definitely changed with modern technology. But video camera refers to a movie or a moving picture because your income statement is reporting on a performance over an extended period of time. Generally, whatever time you're reporting on, it may be for the period ended, which will be the end of your uh, year, reporting year, or it could be reported more frequently for use internally. Let's talk a little bit more about the income statement. So your income statement is gonna represent the revenue that the company earns, as well as the costs and expenses associated with these earnings. We wanna always make sure that we're evaluating the structure of our business and it has the ability to earn a profit. We don't want to consistently have an operation where our expenses exceed our revenues. Besides the fact that it can put us into concerns and issues with the IRS, um, thinking that this is maybe not a viable business, we're in the business of making money. And so we want to be able to evaluate whether or not our expenses are commensurate with our revenues and whether or not it's sustainable. And so part of what lenders, creditors, as well bankers will evaluate, they use various ratios. And the ratios that come from the extracts of the income statement, one of those is your gross profit or your gross profit margin. And so when you look at some of these ratios, you can see that the components come directly off. So we're gonna to go to the income statement, take a look, and then we're gonna look very briefly at a few of these ratios, both what we receive from the balance sheet as well as from the income statement. So this is a sample income statement, pretty basic. Now, every business 
may not have a cost of goods sold. And that relates to expenses directly related to the income or the revenue that's generated. Below that deals with more so your GNA or your general administrative expenses. And so you look at your income statement, you see your revenue, you see how much it was directly, and then you look at the other components of your expenses that helps you to get a better picture of what was required for you to generate that revenue. And many times you want to evaluate certain components. We're not gonna go deeper into various components of the expenses, but you wanna make sure that um, things like payroll, uh, other taxes or whatever, they should be a certain percentage of your income because you always wanna be able to have your expenses. Some persons even break down their expenses into controllable or non-controllable. There's something that you can estimate ahead of time, and this is very useful when it comes to budgeting uh, and sticking close to your budget and making sure that your expenses are not um, exceeding what they're supposed to be uh, and what you budgeted for. And so this is a sample income statement. So let's talk a little bit about ratios. So we've gone back to the balance sheet and down at the bottom we have current or quick ratio. Now these two ratios are used for determining liquidity. And when we say liquidity, we're talking about the company's capacity to pay its debts when they become due. Now, there's a small variance between your current and your quick ratio. And so your current ratio refers to your current assets divided by your current liabilities. And so if we were to determine current assets divided by current liabilities for this particular company, we would be looking at the 175,000 divided by the 140. And so just based on that information alone, this company has a 1.25 current ratio. General rule of thumb, you want your current ratio to be two and above. Why is that? You want to know that for every dollar of your liabilities that you have, you have at least $2 to be able to satisfy it. Now, because inventory, which is the third item on the balance sheet, is not as easily transferable or um, liquidated into cash, we also have what's called the quick ratio. And what that does is it looks at just your cash and your receivables over your current liabilities. Those are the items that are generally easily convertible to cash to know exactly what you have to be able to satisfy your indebtedness at that period of time. And so that is just an example of two of the ratios that are used for a business. Another very important ratio that is used um, often by creditors, lenders, is your debt to equity ratio. Now that basically talks about your solvency, how indebted you are, your debt, compared to your equity. They wanna know, and there, um, there's different percentages that they may use to determine how high your debt is in relation to your equity and where they want it to be, what their ideal number is to determine whether or not they will offer additional credit to the business. It's very important to understand the relationship between the components and numbers on your balance sheet and how it relates to representing how well your business is doing. It's health, solvency, it's liquidity.
Let's look at another ratio, gross profit and margin. This is a number that's taken from your income statement. And so when we talk about gross profit, we're looking at our sales or our revenue, that's our cost of goods sold. So our gross profit would be 350,000. Very noteworthy is this is used as a percentage. There you get the gross profit margin where you take your gross profit over your sales. And so in this example, your gross profit is 350 and your total revenues are 500,000. That lets us know how much we're utilizing of our sales. What is it costing us to generate a dollar? Okay, in this case about 70 cents. And so it's very important to understand the relationship between these financial statements and knowing what to look for and being able to control it. Because once you understand and know what you're looking for, it makes it easier to be able to estimate and to budget correctly so the operation can be successful. Let's talk a little bit about cash flows. I call it the why. And these are just my own WH from the way I view the financial statements. And I say the why. The whole idea of having a business, generating it, and knowing it's so that we have the cash that we need to be able to achieve our business goals. If a business is not generating sufficient cash, then it's not going to be viable for very long. Your statement of cash flow demonstrates to you the money that's entering, leaving a business. Also, this cash flow statement, it's broken down into various components, whether it's operating activities, investing activities, financing activities, so that you can see what cash was utilized by the business for these specific purposes. As indicated on the slide, it shows how well a company generates cash and utilizes the cash to meet its obligation. It's also used by investors and creditors to determine whether a company is solid and how much cash is available. This financial statement complements the balance sheet and the income statement. Now, you may wonder, why is this so important? Why is this even useful? In financial statements, and we'll go back up to the income statement for a moment. Depending on whether or not we use the cash or the accrual basis, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, we may record any revenue that we've earned, or we may invoice a client. If it's credit terms, they have not paid us as yet. However, we have recorded the income, we just have not been paid for it yet. And so it's important to be able to reconcile between the actual cash that has come in versus our actual revenue. And we'll speak about the matching principle in a minute. Now, in order to show how the relationship exists, we're gonna look at this illustration here. Now, these are the financial statements taken out of the curriculum from um, Enterize, may look familiar. We're just gonna look at them in order to help you to understand and wrap your head around the relationship, kind of tie it all together. So we start with the income statement because you know this is talking about your day-to-day -day transactions. And so this would be for the period, let's say, ending December 31st, 2017, it's shown comparatively as well as December 31st, 2016. We have our sales, we have our cost of goods sold, the profit, um, our GNA, general administrative, all of the expenses involved with the revenue that was made. Okay, so that's pretty um, simple to understand. And we won't go any deeper into the specific components of the expenses, but 
you generally will know what expenses your business has, whether it's on a regular basis, whether it's um, an extraordinary or unique, it would be pretty consistent. And usually your cost of goods sold may be driven based on your sales, because those are the expenses that are required. So if it's a component and you have higher sales, then your cost of goods sold would be higher as well, because you're making and putting together more components for sales. So that's directly related. Everything else may stay pretty consistent. And so if you can get to a good point where your general administrative, your overhead, your management expenses are consistent, then it gives you a little bit of leeway regarding the fluctuations that may be involved with your cost of goods sold or the expenses directly related um, to creating your product for sale. So that's your income statement. We have our net profit. Your net profit, if your revenue or your income exceeds your expenses, you have a profit. Conversely, if the expenses are higher, then this would say a net loss instead. So then we look at our balance sheet and we look at the components, current um, long-term assets, current long-term liabilities and owner's equity. Now off the bat, you may not be able to see a relationship between your income statement and your balance sheet. But if you remember before, we talked about retained earnings or net profit. In this example, net profit is broken out from retained earnings. Just a little bit about that so that you understand. Retained earnings is what's rolling forward year after year after year. All of your income, your expenses, the net of those two, whether it's a, a profit, whether it's a loss, would be rolling into your retained earnings year after year. In this example, in order to differentiate the current year, net profit is separately stated. So you'll see that net profit for 2017, and if you go back over to your income statement, you see the same amount, 25,968. Come the next year, that, next, that net profit will be rolled into your retained earnings. So you always want that to be a positive number because notice that that's a component of the owner's equity. You wanna know that you're building value in your business. As retained earnings and profit goes up, so does the value in your business. When you started out, you may have, let's say, started with $1,000, maybe more. It's what you put into the business. But as we mentioned before, we want to be able to have our business making money, generating income for us. So we don't expect that number to stay the same. We want it to grow. We want to build equity, build value in our business. And that benefits us down the road if we decide to get a business valuation and have the business sold, get other um, investors because we want to be able to finance maybe um, high value assets. It's very important that we build that equity in our business. Then we come to the beloved cash flow statement. So you'll notice that it says for the year ending, 1231, 2017. It starts off with cash at the beginning of the year. Now, important to note, on your, in, on your balance sheet, notice that cash for 2016, cash and cash equivalents, 71,780. Notice that cash and cash equivalents for 2017 went down to 15,516. So now, while there may be good reasons, there still is perhaps um, concern just because having cash, cash equivalents, um, and liquidity is important for satisfying our indebtedness. However, you also want to look at the other components of the cash flow statement. So when you look at the other items on your cash flow statement, you'll see that net income, which flowed from your income statement, and then your operating activities relates to your day-to-day -day transactions. So this is actually a comparison of the changes that occurred on your balance sheet, accounts receivable, 
it was 445,000. It went up to 536,000. Your accounts payable, it was 60,000. It went up to 92,000. So in effect, it's saying that more people, when it comes to the accounts receivable, more persons owe money, as do you, because your accounts payable also went up. So somehow, the cash is not coming in. People are paying slower, and your expenses went up. And this is just keeping it very basic, very easy to understand. There's you know, other components as well, but just understanding the basics as we're looking at it, that's what happened here. And so the business needs to evaluate perhaps a few other components, like you know, do we need to look at our accounts receivable turnover rate, which is another ratio that is used. Do we need to perhaps give some incentives as to how we can collect a little bit faster as it relates to our receivable so that we have that liquidity, that cash flowing through to be able to satisfy our own bills. Raquel, so, yes. sorry to jump in, but this, I feel like this is sort of a, a good example of a snitch, right? Where you could be in a position where you're acquiring new customers, you're getting new business, um, but there's still something off about your financial statements and that could reveal this, this accounts receivable problem, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's why it's very important to know and understand all of the components because off the bat, like you mentioned, wow, you know, revenue, because if you go over to your income statement, notice revenue also went up, but the profit went down. So yes, and that's a very excellent point. So looking at the full picture, it's like, aha, so you thought you were doing better, your top number was better, but the bottom line does not reflect a better health of the business. So it's important to look at everything as a whole to truly understand, not take just one component and figure, oh, I made more money this year. Because no, when you look at your profit, you had 73,000 in profit in 2016, but only 25,000 in profit for 2017. So it's taking everything as a whole and really evaluating uh, this health and wealth of your business. So let's talk a little bit about now and later. We mentioned before about reporting on a cash and a cool basis. And here again is where your financial statements can snitch on you because you may be reflecting good revenues because you are recording, let's say you use a financial system or in some way, it's showing you high revenue. However, when it comes now for satisfying your debt, you're wondering why is your bank account lower? Why is it that you are having difficulty meeting the demands? And that's because while the cash basis of reporting it shows your revenues and expenses when money changes hands. Easier to implement, more closely represents the bank account activity. But when you talk about being more accurate and the matching principle, then you're talking about the accrual basis. What do we mean when we say that? Well, if you're on a project, you're required to you know, get certain supplies, perhaps uh, pay employees, other vendors related to this particular project. I don't know about you, but your employees don't necessarily want to wait until you get paid for the project. And so you are expending monies related to generating your revenues. You want to be able to have a full picture of, okay, what have I earned related to what I have expended. And so your accrual method gives you that better picture, good reliable information as to what was involved in generating the company's profits for that period of time to make sure that they are properly matched. That can sometimes be a challenge and for most small businesses, 
they do report on the cash basis. Many times you'll notice that your software package allows you to switch between the cash and the accrual basis. And that can be very useful in knowing one, what you've actually collected versus what you've actually billed. Because you wanna have the full picture to know, okay, what is my condition? Because whether or not you've done the work and you've billed it, they haven't paid, that's not gonna necessarily help you when you have an IOU for whether it's your utility or other uh, vendors or indebtedness. And so this helps us to get a good picture on where we need to be and what we should be looking at as it relates to um, our numbers and our financial statements. So in a nutshell, that is a overview of how your financial statements can snitch on you, how it can reflect certain things that may not truly um, be representative of what your understanding is and why it's very important to know this information or at least have someone explain it to you and have it done with a certain regularity so that you have clarity on what you're looking for. My last slide here is just giving you a little bit of information about myself. Um, and if there's anything else to add, we can perhaps open up the work the, to some questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, I definitely like to open up to questions, but I'm also curious to hear from either anyone on the line, and I can unmute you if you, if you, you know, want to share if it's easier, easier to talk than type, or even from you, Raquel, just from your experience um, with participants in the class and other business owners, what are some of the other sort of more common issues that you've seen arise once people really get a handle on their financial statements? Um, and then part two, what do people do about them? Good question. So we found that, especially as part of um, our Interise Emerging Leaders Program, this particular module forces persons to look at their financial statements. And what's revealed, for many, it overwhelms them because they never have to look at it or never ask their accountant or their bookkeeper for these numbers before. And in many cases, some have found that the numbers just did not make any sense. And it they were going through the business, but as to categorizing transactions properly, you know, the enlightenment of understanding helped them to go back to their accountant and say, well, you know what, I have a question on this. It also, when compared with industry standards, they were able to see the performance of their business and see whether or not they were performing um, based on the industry, better, worse. Generally, many people were not capturing their receivables. They weren't uh, showing that. And so their, their ratios and their percentages were way off um, as it relates to the balance sheet. Um, looking at the income statement, there were expenses and things that they had been incurring that they had not captured as it related to the operations of their business. And so it was, they were able to get a little bit of enlightenment, uh, but generally missing receivables, um, collections have been, um, you know, completely out of control, but being able to, some of the suggestions being, were made on offering better terms to some of their customers, offering percentages off if paid within a certain time, uh, being able to even work out payment terms with certain vendors, as well as utilizing cash to pay down instead of incurring high um, interest rates with long-term debt, items like that. Great. You know, I even, I heard from one business owner that, you know, he, he fired a customer. You know, he said that the sort of the, the, I mean, it didn't sound like a very pleasant person or account to deal with, but um, the, the revenue was not worth that you know the lag, like the the problems that it was causing for yes. for cash flow. 
Correct. Mm -hmm. And a lot of a lot of you know when businesses analyze it, even with the IRS, if the business is not generating revenue over a certain period of time, they tend to consider that it's possible that this business is no longer a viable business, but it's a hobby. And so a business, and then you know they can lose many things in the way of having a status of a business. And so it's really important to make sure that this business is generating income and revenue and you know that you have good customers, customers that are paying and that you're not having to utilize your um, cash just to keep things moving while you, there's a certain lag but it has to be able to have a good receivable um, turnover rate, being able to generate the cash required um, for selling um, and meeting the indebtedness. It's just ever so important. And I think that what many business owners do is they get caught up in working in their business instead of on their business. And so the importance of stepping back and evaluating how is my business performing? What is it doing? Uh, what can I do differently? Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen until they go and do like maybe a deep dive or a program that forces them to look at it. And yes, you may be passionate about what you do. You enjoy it. But your financial statements will snitch on you and tell you, hey, you may enjoy this, but um, this is not actually a, a lucrative or a beneficial uh, venture. You need to evaluate, uh, make some adjustments, make changes in the way you do business. Many people have budgeted more in order to keep expenses limited, looked at, they've looked at various models as it relates to seeing how much of a profit they want to be able to generate versus the expenses, just items like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's really forcing you to look at it, to make it um, a profitable benefit to the business. Right. And I have um, another example from one of the, one of the business owners on the line. Um, and he says that, you know, reviewing the financial statements gave a better understanding of, um, or sorry, better understanding of our financial statements helped develop one of our business plan goals, which was maintaining better profit margins. So even though revenue was down 17% last year, retained earnings doubled. Um, and this business is in the second year of its strategic growth action plan. So that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. you know, growth right there in the second year of the plan and focusing Absolutely. on the, yeah, focusing on the high margin aspects of um, the business products and customers all stemmed from the financial statements. So that's yep. a great example. Thank you for sharing that, Chris. Yep. And it's excellent because his revenue was down as what he noted, but there were other components that were more significant that showed that the business was doing better in health. So that's actually a very good example. Absolutely. And something that you said earlier, too, made me think, oh, the, you know, we all know the working in your business um, or working on your business, not in your business. And I find that sometimes, you know, if you if you have a CPA who you know, who you trust, um, there's a tendency sometimes to just kind of rely on them to surface some of these issues. So where does the role of a CPA stop? Um, you know, and, and that attention from the business owner start. So your CPA performs a very important role and it's generally a role of oversight. So at the point where every business owner should be requiring on, I like to say monthly, but it can be quarterly financial statements and they should be requiring a sit down with their CPA to understand the numbers that are presented. So ultimately, the issue goes back to the day-to-day -day and the internal operations, whether there's a separate bookkeeper or someone that's you know, managing the sales and the expenses, because the adage is garbage in, garbage out. And so the CPA is gonna no doubt receive a set of books that may have numbers, but if those are not good numbers, they're gonna basically be reporting on information that may not truly represent. So it's still in the business owner's responsibility to be sure that whoever they have internally doing their day-to-day -day stuff, because that may or may not generally be a, your, your CPA, to make sure that the transactions are recorded accurately. Make sure that 
um, there's good source documentation so that when the CPA comes in, they should be asking for certain information to support the numbers that they see, especially numbers that seem to be uh, out of whack of sorts or not consistent with perhaps the performance that the business owner has projected. So the business owner should make a thing of uh, a point of having source documentation for everything. I mean, the IRS requires it for a certain amount of years, but it should be easily accessible. And let me go ahead and add in an electronic format. Um, you know, we're living in a technological age and there's lots of apps and um, utilizing technology more fully to be able to automate many of these processes. This is the push even um, in our industry as certified public accountants is being able to automate um, and let the information work for you instead of having a whole lot of manual uh, input, um, duplication of effort. So the business owner, source documentation, utilizing technology more efficiently and being able to convey that information to the CPA so that they can be able to report um, truly accurate numbers on the, the health of the business. That's great, thank you. Do we have any other questions from folks on the line? I just wanted to also um, add, Laura Lee, uh -huh. that many times, uh, many businesses, they put a lot of their liquidity or their cash into things that are not sustainable. And so every business needs to evaluate what they're using their cash for, because you may have cash, but then just being able to know, well, you know what, should we purchase um, this asset? And looking at what are the benefits and doing uh, evaluation of what is generated by certain components of the business, which ones are more profitable, and, and breaking that out, many businesses have been able to experience success because they realized that they were putting a lot of effort into certain things that were not as profitable for their business. And so just kind of improving in that, improving if they have inventory, improving in their inventory management, procurement, um, getting the, the best um, values from their vendors. Uh, and then of course, working on collection of their receivables, and having a focus, knowing exactly what threats could come up to their current position if they feel that it's um, you know, positive right now. What strategic plans should they be making? Um, and all of these things, utilizing your financial statements um, properly um, can help them with that decision making. Great, thank you. And for planning, just wanted to add to another thing, uh -huh. you know, like I had a, a client and they wanted to be able to satisfy, um, figure out whether or not they should take on an additional debt payment. Now, any accountant, you tell us you want to spend more money, we're like, wait, no way. But there are certain um, good expenditures. And um, in this case, expending this will lead to future returns because that debt will translate into uh, that person being able to bring in more revenue into the business. And so just being able to have current financial information, it helps to eliminate things like um, fraud that can be perpetrated through your bank accounts. Because if you don't reconcile your bank accounts on a regular basis, you could be subject to fraud. Um, but keeping the information current so that you know what your numbers are, and even requiring a cash and an accrual basis financial statement so that you know exactly what you can extend further um, and comparatively really important um, for running the business. Great. Well, thank you so much. I don't see any additional questions here, um, but you did see Raquel's contact information if things come up, and of course, you know, as you continue through um, 
your module twos, if you're currently in the program or continue on through your growth plan, you know, Interise continues to be here as a resource as well um, for you. So do not hesitate to reach out to us, to reach out to Raquel, to continue to reach out to your instructor. Um, there's a lot of support for you all as you, as you continue to grow your businesses. Um, so Raquel, again, thank you so much for your time. I think it's always super valuable to kind of come back to these basic building blocks and understand the, the broader impacts on your business growth and planning. Um, and this is really, really clear and um, just a really great way to, to do just that. So thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. All right, everyone. We will be in touch again soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.